All right, folks, hello, welcome back to another short UE5 tutorial. And in this tutorial today, we are going to be going over how to enable scaling on our textures. So about a week ago, maybe a bit longer, I made a video on how to offset your textures. And that basically gives you the ability to move your textures um, horizontally and, and or vertically. Now that is great, but a lot of people, a lot of people, they'll need to know how to also scale their textures in combination of being able to um, increase their normal, uh, their normal texture as well as being able to offset their texture. What that means is they need the ability to both be able to scale their, their texture so to make it big and small, <laughs> as well as being able to offset it. So to be able to move it left and right, and as well as to be able to increase their normal intensity. Now, of course, that sounds very advanced. Now, for a mass material, that is like, I mean, you're going to love having those options because that way, if you're ever having clear signs of like texture scaling or things like that, or maybe you're just like, I want this to be smaller or so much bigger because the, let's say the plane you're using is just mass. It's just like massive. Well, you're going to want something that's also uh, pretty big. So you're going to want to scale up your texture. What do, I, what do I mean by that? Let's take out this plane here. Let's move it um, a bit closer to us, right? So we're just moving about here. Now we're going to actually end up um, scaling this. So this is about, the default is like one one. So let's do like 20 by, let's say 20. Oh, that's right, it's already locked, okay. <laughs> let's try, you know, let's go a bigger. Let's go for it. So if we were to apply this um, MM cast iron, uh, so this uh, material instance, what you'll see here is something a bit like this. Now I hate, oh, that's right. I'm actually gonna have to increase that time of day. You know, maybe I'll just actually give it some color. What do you think? So I give the base color some color. Now let's actually do that real quick. Uh, constant two vector, or just two parameter, call this base color. Think this will work? What do you think? <laughs> Just give me one second. Let's actually enable this in as well as default this to one. And everything. So the default is set to one. Um, and that makes it white, but that's fine. So now the default is one. Actually, you know what? I need the default to be black. So we'll just leave it like that. And then apply and save. But it's already converted into a um, parameter. So now, if I was to open this material, uh, mass material, and go to base color, I could change this to something. Um, set that to one, as well as set that to one. Okay, so now it's white. Okay, perfect. Now let's change this to something like uh, what, do, what do I want? What do I want? Uh, you know, we could go with like a lime green. Yeah, I feel like that's a bit easier on the eyes to see, really see that detail. Let's actually turn down the sunlight even more so that way we can really just get like a good sort of like a map of it. And we're actually gonna move this out of the way, no longer need that light bulb. Okay, <laughs> so as you can see here, what we have is the ability to be able to offset the texture. So if we pay attention to, let's say this little, wow, Look, looks like a little donut almost, right? So if we pay attention to that, if we were to offset it. Let's go ahead and reset and reset and reset. Well, we actually lost a donut. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. Okay, there you go. So, so when everything is reset to zero, the donut is here. If we move it, you know, along the x-axis. Oh, actually, I think I have the axis. Oh, I'm facing the wrong direction. I think I'm facing. Yeah, because you look at this little gizmo here. This is the x. So we're moving it along. Okay. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay. So as you can see, we can move it um, you know, along the x-axis, so to the left or to the right, as well as up and down. So again, follow that, follow that little donut there. Really make sure you're getting the idea as to what, what's important. So as as well as being able to move it left and right and ups and down, uh, we can also increase that normal intensity. Now, this is the this is currently set to two, but if I was to set this to four, you can see the details popping out much more, as well as um I was to set it to something crazy high, maybe 40. Well, you know, that is just like, I mean, it's literally like freaking emanating at this point. You know, it's just too much, way too much. If we were to set it to zero, it's just like a complete smooth wallpaper and no actual uh, normal texture being applied. Now, what we need to be able to do is to make this texture bigger and smaller. 
So if we're going to be able to do that, then we need to add in the code that are in our mass material. So that was a very long and drawn out explanation as to why it's important to be able to scale it as well as to you know show what we currently can do and how we're going to add it in. That way we're not actually losing the ability to do any of these, which is adding more um, functionality to our mass material. Very long, drawn out, sorry about that. <laughs> but it's not, it's, it won't take long, okay? One thing I do like to do is just get straight to the point when it comes to setting up the code because it's you know the most difficult part. So if we were to go back to this, first let's rename this from offset to, Let's call this um, scale and offset because we're now being able to scale and offset on this exact same uh, on this on this one little node right here, this constant two vector node. Now we're going to just as we did in the previous tutorial. If you haven't seen that one already, I'll definitely be sure to link it in the description. That way, you'll know how to get this uh, this uh, part set up, and, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you're going to um, all this x axis. We'll next, we we'll actually need to add in the offset part. So X offset axis, um, as well as Z offset. That way we know exactly what this is doing with the Z axis as well as playing X axis. Now for this one, this is going to be um, scale X axis, and then scale Y. Now at this point we are Almost done, <laughs> believe it or not. So now that we have the, the scale, or you could also call it tiling, whichever one you're more familiar with. Um, so if we're using scale or tiling, uh, all we really need to do is to be able to combine these two nodes into one. And that's really all an, an append vector does. It takes two different um, pins and, and combines them into one. So that way, let's say if you had two, um, let's say you had two different inputs and you needed to put them needed to put these two inputs into one uh, output right here. So, well, actually, this is also an input node. Um, OK, try this. If I needed to take these two nodes, these two pins, and put them into one slot here, that's what an pin node does. It binds the two into one. That way, we can just plug it in, and we'll be good to go. Now, instead of plugging this in directly to the add node, what we're going to want to do this time is actually add in a multiply. So now we're just going to connect this to the uh, B section, connect the texture coordinate to the A, and actually disconnect this one for now. There's no link there. And now that we have this multiply node set up, as well as the previous append node set up, now all we really need to do is just combine these two and to add A and add B. Now, again, just as we did previously in the other tutorial, put these into the UV sections of all of our uh, texture maps, and we are actually good to go. So if we were to hit apply and save, and go into our uh, master material, well, now we see that the currently the texture is looking like a wallpaper. So the reason why that's happening is because we actually defaulted these to zero um and there should not be um oh okay well their default set to one so that's perfect what we have here is that they're set to zero so we actually need to reset that and there we go okay perfect so now if we were to pay attention to the donut once again we were to scale it on the x you see it's sort of being smushed you seeing how that's working that's that same donut as well as if we were to scale it on the y I was really being smushed. And now that is, that's a very thin donut. <laughs> you know, it's really lost its touch, lost its grand appeal. So let's set that back to one. And then if also you wanted to do it the opposite direction. Let's say I wanted to make it an even bigger donut. Um, I don't even know where it's at. Oh, probably over there. If I was to go like this, you see, we're getting some more functionality. Yep. Okay, set that to 1.1. 0.1. Now I don't even know where it's at. We're going to find the donut. Let's look for the donut. We're looking. Okay. <laughs> we got it. As you can see, that's what scaling does. You know, it enables you to make things bigger and smaller um, as necessary. 
and this is how you set it up. So now that we went over how to actually set it up, we're actually done here. <laughs> so it was very long and drawn out. Probably could make it shorter, but I'm not really going to because I sort of like the added detail that I provided. That way, you know, people can understand that you can have these, you know, this very um, necessary um, master material set up with just, you know, this amount of code. Like this is this is not much. Not much is going on here at all. Yet it gives you all that functionality. Very important uh, for master materials. And then, you know, if you wanted to make a material instance, as we did here, I mean, you'll you'll be able to have that same functionality. So that's really all I have for you today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments whether or not you, um, you know, something else you want to see or anything that you feel that I had missed or maybe uh, went over a bit too fast and you want more detail for. Um, with that said, I'll leave you to your UE5 endeavors. Best of luck because it is definitely difficult when you don't know what you're doing. And I've said that about every video. <laughs> said that at the end of every video and I'll continue to do so. Because it's so true, it's so very difficult. Number engine five, where you don't know what you're doing. That's the reason I I, I make these videos.